So let's talk about Tetra Packs and the reason that we're using them in this activity today. So Tetra Packs are really common these days. We all have them in our households quite often, I imagine. Um, and they look quite innocent because they look like they're made from cardboard. And they are, the outside of them is cardboard, but they really can't be easily recycled because inside they're lined with a thin film of plastic and in most cases aluminium as well. So a mixed material is really hard to recycle. In Cardiff, we can't put them in our green bags, unfortunately, which are collected by the council. We have to collect them up and take them to one specific recycling centre, um, which I imagine is tricky for lots of people. Um, if this doesn't happen, they have to go into our general waste bins. Um, so we thought we would do something different with them. And in actual fact, we are going to make today a really simple and effective hanging planter. So we're going to take our Tetra Pack and make sure you've given it a good rinse out. And the first thing we're going to do is make some drainage holes. So I just take a craft knife and I really simply just make like a cross at the bottom. Some of them are a little bit harder than others, depending on where the material overlaps. But you probably only need two, maybe three little crosses like this. And then just take your scissors or a pencil and just give them a little twist open so that you've got some drainage holes like that. I'd say probably with these two is enough, to be honest. So once you've done that, you want to start cutting your holes out to be able to put your plant in and give it a place to grow from. So I usually make sure I leave a good two to three inches at the bottom of the Tetra Pack so that you've got enough space for the soil and that's where I will start cutting. I'll always make sure I leave about a finger's width from each side. So again, I'm gonna take my craft knife like this and just cut in, make an incision like this. You can always, if you like, and prefer to be a bit more precise, you can use your pen to draw on the shapes that you want to cut out. But I usually keep it really simple and just make an arch shape like this. Now, if you are doing this activity with children, it's really hard for them to use craft knives and sometimes a little bit dangerous. So my advice is start off with the first incision for them and then hand over them the scissors and they can cut the rest out. So I then should be able to pull out my art shape like this and you can see I'm starting to make space for my plants to go in. Um, at this stage you can decide how many holes you're going to cut out. You can have just one on the front and the back or if you prefer you can do them all the way around. If you're doing ones on the side, make them a little bit thinner um, because you don't want to compromise the integrity of the Tetra Pack, especially if it's going to be outside in different weathers. So we've got our drainage holes, we've cut our holes in the side. At this stage, you'll want to make a way for it to hang. So you've got two options. If you've still got the lid of the Tetra Pack, you can do a really, really simple option. So you can take some twine like this and just tie it together at the bottom to make a loop and then you can just open up the top of the tetra pack pop the knotted part of the loop just slightly inside and then carefully and securely twist that closed and because we're not going to be hanging too much weight that is actually secure enough now to hang your tetra pack but if you've lost the lid or you've decided you don't want to have the lid because actually some of the plants look really good growing through the lid, you can do exactly what I did on the bottom with the drainage holes. Make some crosses at either side, here or here, depending on what style of Tetra Pack you've got. Some of them you can even pop open the flaps like this and make a little incisions here and here and you can loop your string through. So you've got a couple of options there and it's nice and simple. So we're pretty much ready now to plant up our Tetra Pack 
and when I'm choosing what things I want to grow in these I try and remember that it's not very much soil and that actually they dry out really quickly so my uh, plant of choice to put in here is nasturtiums and we get the added benefit of having some edible leaves and flowers and nasturtiums as you know they're pretty hardy they'll, they'll grow anywhere so all you want to do is start popping your soil in it's, it's quite nice just to use your hands it's really hard to actually get it in with a trowel and this is a really nice activity for kids so popping in the soil and getting it as close as you can to the top but not leaving a little bit of a gap so that um, it's not all going to pour out when you water it so filling that up pressing it down as you're going and then we're just going to take a few of our nasturtium seeds and just pop them in one two i'd probably put three in just in case some don't germinate pop them in cover them up maybe put a little bit extra soil in and firm it down nicely at this point if you're doing an activity out in your community and people are going to be taking these home I usually say to people, water them when you get home, otherwise they'll be taking something with them that's, that's dripping wet. If they press the soil down nicely, it's going to be secure and it's not going to come out and they can give them a good water at home. So here's one I made earlier and as you can see, those nasturtiums have started to germinate and they're going to quite happily grow through all these little gaps and I just hang that in my garden on my fence. Um, another plant I like to put in there is a bit of lobelia. It looks really effective, but any trailing plants that don't need too much soil, um, anything that's happy in a really small amount of soil and doesn't mind drying out now and again. So a couple of tips about caring for these. Um, just make sure you don't put them anywhere that's in too much full sunlight. That's not too much of a problem for me in my small urban garden. And it is just because they dry out really quickly. Occasionally what I like to do if you get a really hot summer is take them all down and pop them into just a tub of water and let them soak for a little bit um, if they're getting really dry. But other than that, they're really easy to care for, they're effective, they'll last a full season and it's a really nice simple activity to get people into growing, especially if they have only small spaces to grow in. Mm -hmm.